Welcome to Drive By with Michelle with your host, Michelle Dickey. Drive By with Michelle is an extension of Consulting for Heightened Awareness where we dive into more spiritual truths for trauma healing and spiritual growth with God's wisdom. This show is not only educational, but inspirational and motivational. So now, please welcome the host of Drive By with Michelle, Michelle Dickey. Hello, everyone. I am Michelle Dickey, your host for Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And yes, as you heard in the opener, that we are, that's right, a non-denominational spiritual ministry, meaning Holy Spirit-led, that specializes in narcissistic abuse and trauma recovery with God's wisdom. And now we can add basic scientific facts tried and true technique and more because that's what you're going to find at CHA Academy. All right, we have courses and memberships available at the Academy as well. What you will learn there is how to deal with toxic co-workers, how the trauma bond is formed, and then when you start unpacking that bag of talents and gifts on the inside of you, you're going to be ready for that 5P coaching course. That's right, tried and true techniques. God is the author of the five P's because that's what we got to do, right? All right, everybody, there you go. We are going to dive into how we came to know that narcissism is a spiritual disorder because it's a process. And I know those who conform to this world and like the world labels and, and, and things like that because that, that, yeah, that fits inside the matrix, right? Okay. Well, we're not in there. I mean, we're navigating through it, obviously. We're still physically in it, but spiritually we're not. Because when we are awakened to all of that abuse around us and we get on that trauma healing path right, to overcome triggers and things like that because we need to put away childish things. And so to do that, to mature and grow as we're supposed to, okay? Striving to become more Christ-like every single day. And Jesus was very mature, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, we had this discussion in one of our CHA Let Just Chat shows that streams on the YouTube channel. Yes, uh, frequently, <laughs> but Sundays around 2 p.m. Eastern time, all right? And if we are able to, after the live Truth Seeker podcast on Tuesdays at around 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, we might jump back on. Every now and again, jump back on with a Let's Just Chat on the YouTube channel on Tuesdays. But God has me taking breaks, too. But definitely Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, somewhere between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., you can, God willing, you will find Let's Just Chat streaming on the YouTube channel, Narcissism and Cognitive Dissonance. And so I'm going to give y'all more of what we have going on later on. But I want to go ahead and get into the beginning. What was it like the moment we realized we're in a spiritual battle between good and evil? The real spiritual battle between good and evil. I know I was driving down the road. You'll hear this. Okay, we're not going to forget that day. We never do. When we hear the final trumpet call, that's yeah, a day we will never forget. We're not going to live there. But I got to share this with you all in order to, yes, help put things in perspective as to how we come to know that narcissism is a spiritual disorder and not a mental. Well, it is mental in the sense of spiritual wickedness in high places. You'll hear about that in episode 46 on Spotify, iHeart, Pandora, and more. All right. And Truth Seeker podcast, episode number 46. And they we're branching out from that in this, okay? Yes, <laughs> because there's a lot to unpack because it is a journey, all right? It is a journey into God's reality, that spiritual awakening, and it is ongoing, okay? Because God's not going to reveal all, like, at the same time. God does not overwhelm. Mm -mm. If anything comes at y'all, and it feels overwhelming, that's coming from the devil. That's not coming from God. God is a God of calm and order. While he does do some things suddenly, God takes his time. 
right? Okay, and so we learn to do the same thing. We get stuff done, and we do get it done quickly. Chosen one are, yeah, well, we get things done. That's just bottom line. Chosen one can. And in the beginning, we're awakened. Holy Spirit activates. We're like, oh my goodness. This is a real spiritual battle between good and evil. Because I was analyzing some of the mental notes I have been taking of the ex-psychopath roommate case study. Because I wanted to know more of what was going on because I was like, okay, hold up a second. <laughs> when more, I mean, when you've got like a 68-year-old, right, guy walking around the house, throwing temper tantrums and acting like a toddler. It's like, hold up a second. That something's not right. <laughs> this is not right. And I remember the world trying to teach us that that was just age reversal. And we're like, ah, 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 no, there's more to it. It's a spiritual. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's demonic possession. So we're like, okay. But we don't know that at first. So in the beginning, you know, God awakens us. So we're sorting through that mud and the muck, right? And so we're trying to overcome the initial shock. We're trying to overcome what just happened, right? We're trying to go, okay. And then we do later on realize that that rug, that feeling of a rug being pulled out from under us, that actually God turning things back around into the upright position as they're supposed to be. And no, y'all, I'm not part of no group, okay? <laughs> we just talk with our hands, all right? So the thing is, is that we're like, okay, at first we start resonating. Well, the world labels resonate with us in the beginning because we're trying to make sense of what it is we just got out of, right? What is it that we were just observing, right? What is it <laughs> when that rhetorical mask flips, their true colors come out? And it's like, oh my goodness. All right, okay. And so we start searching, right? All those different behaviors. And so this disorder pops up, this disorder pops up, this disorder pops up. And then some of us who had that purple book, we're looking through it. Like, okay, okay, let's try to make sense of what's going on. And so at the beginning, that makes sense because it, it matches, you know what I'm saying? The definition to those behavioral traits, okay, it matches what we saw. Like, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. And so we're getting um, a sense of, okay. And so we think it, you know, at first we think it's NPD. No, that goes out the window later, but we got to get there, all right? So we're thinking of it as such. And then we're like, okay, because it fits. And then we start to see more of them <laughs> right oh we all do we start right out there and we're like okay hold up a second and so i'll share with you all what i shared in that episode 46 because it helped to put it in perspective because i remember having this question too and i know i'm not alone <laughs> no 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 <laughs> all right when i got away from that ex psycho case study Right? And I went back to North Carolina. I got a job at, at, yeah, at a pizza place. Started as an insider, but then I moved to delivery driver. Because after I started identifying, that is the season where God started to reveal the spiritual side of things. Okay? And I was like, all right, these coworkers, hold up a second. Like the whole, what, one, two, three, four, five, like all five of them are engaging in some of the exact same behaviors that that toddler in adult body was, was behaving in. I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I was like, what are we seeing? Because my first thought was, does that ex-psychopath know, roommate know these people or do they know him? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? And God revealed to me, and he said, no. He said, they don't know each other. They don't even know who he is. He don't even know who they are. 
So I was like, okay, then I'm listening. <laughs> I was like, what? What is this? And so it's all part of God helping us get that heightened awareness. Like we start to see it more. And I'm like, all right, that's where how to deal with toxic coworkers, those five tried and true steps. That's when I started, that's right, implementing those. That's why I have them for you all on a course at CHA Academy, btbw.com. That's in the description below. Okay, the link for quicker access, the website, YouTube channel, and the Academy should be there. And the other place you can find the links to all of the social where Consulting for Heightened Awareness is located is on the My Social page of the website. That's right. Okay, cdhrwdrmd.org. And you will see Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. And so what happened is I was like, all right, I had to zip it. <laughs> Once I realized, all right, dealing with the same, same type. I'm like, all right then. So I was like, because everybody a narcissist? I mean, it seems that way at first, doesn't it? Uh-huh, yes, it does. It seems that way at first. See, God has to reveal all of our enemies first before we'll be able to discern between a fellow chosen one and the end. Right, we've got to have that proper discernment. So this is part of the process. Okay, this is part of God removing brain fog, you know, that cloud of cognitive dissonance, a.k.a. confusion that we were under for a very long time, <laughs> our whole life, pretty much, in the first two realities. Remember, the first reality, you know, where we're taught we have two rose-tinted lenses, right? Oh, everybody's good, right? Every human being is a good human being. The only bad human beings are criminals and, you know, basically that's it right yeah that's what we were led to believe and then we get into the perception management reality which is the second reality that's one rose to the lens one clear lens okay one of each because now we start to see hold up a second <laughs> not every human being is a good human being hmm but we don't know what we're dealing with yet. And so we spend a good majority of our time there uh, until God awakens us at his appointed time. Remember, he tells us in his word that that's what happens. He's going to wake us up at his appointed time. God knows the exact day, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second that he's going to wake us up. Mm-hmm. And that's how it goes. So... We start to see it more, okay? And we learn, okay, hold up a second. So that's when I zipped it. And I stopped taking my lunchbox inside and leaving it in the in the office. Yeah, before I started delivering pizza, and I was on the inside, right? I was an insider. So I was like, hold up a second. <laughs> and so I inquired about driving and delivering because I, to get out of there as much as possible, okay and deliver and you know and that's fine because i was like okay i had to do some more analyzing and it also gave me more opportunity on delivery to really get with god and and, and be like okay what is going on and so this was all during yes y'all this was in 2020 not that long ago this is how fast God moves us. Okay, he does things slow, but when he hastens us on his time, in other words, he gets us where he needs us to be. He is a time redeemer. So about 2020, I'm like, okay, we have something, something more is going on here. There's something more to this, so much more to this than meets the eye because those worldview labels were not, yeah, they weren't jiving with me anymore. Not with my spirit. Because I was like, hold up. It's just too uncanny. So I was like, all right, that's that. And I do remember asking God at that time, what in the world is the meaning to all this? And he led me to Luke 177, 
All right, we are coming up on a short break. I am Michelle Dickey, your host for Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. Stay tuned to learn more about how we came to know that narcissism is a spiritual disorder and more when we come back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hello, everyone. I am Michelle Dickey, your host for Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV Network. And we are discussing, you know, how narcissism is a spiritual disorder and how we came to know that, all right, and understand that, okay, because we all go through those seasons, right, where things will resonate for a time to help us make sense of what we just came out of, right? And, And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? In fact, that's how the process is supposed to play out. The unfortunate side of it is that a lot of people get stuck in the worldview labels, okay? Because it's unfortunate, but uh, they want to hang on to that. But remember, the enemy likes to keep people there because he don't, yeah, he doesn't want people to know that we are in a spiritual battle for the mind. And there would be no spiritual battle for the mind if there wasn't some kind of spiritual disorder, right? Think about it. So it's that moment, right? That I was talking about in the last segment, that moment that the world views, the labels and stuff, they stop. Yeah, they don't sit right on our spirit anymore. And we're like, okay, then that's pretty much an extension of us becoming truth seekers. Okay. Chosen one, spiritual warriors for Christ become truth seekers because we're like I them. So if these worldview labels are no longer resonating, what is really going on here? Because I remember noticing and picking up on a lot quicker, you know, as I was going through that book. Yeah, you know, the purple one. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Why is there so much crossover or better known as comorbidity okay i said why why and then why would somebody be labeled more than one why why and this is not making sense i said it's too confusing and we know that god is not the author of confusion right okay so i was like okay this this, something's off (laughs) all right something's off so now we enter that season of okay we're seeking truths right we're seeking god's spiritual truth And so I was like, there's more to it. There's got to be. And so what ended up happening was 
I got a different job as a receptionist somewhere else while still at that pizza place, right? Okay, so I left them there and went to be. And I know that the girl I replaced was a Jezebel. I picked up on the saccharine sweetness and the fakeness real quick. I was like, okay. And then the people that work there, all right, I had to take this in consideration. I was like, okay, hold up a sec, because I know what happened to them. And so my so-called immediate supervisor was sharing with me how it felt like the rug had been pulled out from under them when her true colors started to come out. And I said to myself, okay, hold up. Okay. So she just did a number on them over the last three years. All right, I'm going to give this time because he was asking some very legit questions that a true survivor would ask. Like how long does it take to notice these things? How long does it take to overcome that? You know, things like that. And of course, to answer that depends on a lot of things. So a lot of factors go into play there. But we usually, we learn later on that they show their true colors usually within the first three to four months. It's just before God awakened us, we weren't sure what we were dealing with. And we oftentimes did what? That's right. We ignored the intuition. Well, we don't do that anymore. See, this is why within the first three to four months, that last Jezebel case study got turned into a case study. I was not ignoring the intuition, but God knew I needed to see something in the physical for confirmation. And he wanted to show me the snake pupils. Okay. So anyhow, now we're at that. Okay. Season where worldview is not making sense. No, it doesn't make no sense anymore because I started the day two on that job. I spotted a flying monkey walking across the gravel, mumbling incoherently to himself. And I went, oh boy. <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> okay. I was like, so we got to figure out who the master narc is. All right. So basically it didn't take me more than a month and a half to identify who was who. And the master narc was the owner obviously. And so I identified the three Jezebels in the office and then one, uh, another Jezebel that happened to be, um, related to, okay. By marriage, if you will. And I'm like, all right then. Oh yeah. And that Jezebel kept swearing she was going to be able to cook something. She wanted to cook something for me. <laughs> we learned do not accept food from the demonically possessed. Mm -mm. So we still don't know that that's what we're dealing with yet though. And so I'm like, okay. So on my phone, I have biblegateway.com bookmark. And so as yeah, after I identify all of the narcissist, the immediate was a part-time one. I did not get Jezebel from him. Okay. He was just a part-time one. And I said to myself, okay, since the worldview is sticking anymore, what are we dealing with? And so God led me to Roman chapter one. Yep. And I believe it was, yeah, because when I used to read the Bible, uh, until I caught the ex angry narc cheating. Uh, <laughs> listen, the narcissists that I talk about, y'all, that were in my world, you will easily learn more about all of them in our book, Real Events of Narcissistic Abuse Someone's Survival Guide, available on the website. Okay, that's right. Format, easy PDF download, y'all. It's so simple. And and across multiple ebook platforms like Scribed and others, and then Amazon, of course. So you can get your copy just about anywhere. And you know, this book right here, yeah, will let you know how this ministry and work came into fruition. And so when God led me to Romans 1, 
And I'm going to tell you right now, it was light bulb moment after light bulb moment after light bulb moment. And I said to myself, well then, so, because starting in verse 22 of chapter 1, you know, God says how they're professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Well, that <laughs> was, we do see that now with the narcissist. Because they've got that puffed up pride, right? And that high mindedness where they think they know everything when they don't know anything. And then in verse 23, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So he give, God gave them up to vile affection. And I was like, wow, okay, because here's where it really kicked in for me, right here, y'all. Verse 29, well, 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, and then malignity whisperers right they're gossipers backbiters haters of god despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents disobedient to god without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable and unmerciful without natural affection many of us come to realize what did we get if we tried to hug a narcissist, right? Yeah, we got this really stiff, tense. Mm -hmm, Y'all know what I'm talking about. No genuine warmth whatsoever. So it's like, okay. Right there in Romans chapter 1. And I, I mean, when I was reading that, I was like, oh, he's describing the narcissist. Wow. And then... I enter into that season where God said, okay, this is spiritual, right? It's a spiritual battle, right? Remember, in the beginning, this is the real spiritual battle between good and evil. Okay, so we made the acknowledgement. We understand. And then we learn in Ephesians 6, 12, okay? But we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And then in... 1 Corinthians, I don't remember the that verse right offhand, but y'all know what I'm talking about. That God tells us that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, meaning it's not physical. Just like he said in Ephesians 6, 12, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And that our weapons of warfare are not carnal. That means the same thing. But for the pulling down a stronghold, which is breaking trauma bonds, Demonic trauma bond or demonic strongholds is what they are, right? Okay, so we're like, okay, and so when you read the rest of Ephesians 6 12, tells us that we are wrestling against principality, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So once that sinks in as to what we're dealing with. That spiritual wickedness in high places in the mind, right? It's a spiritual battle for the mind. Oh, okay, okay. And so narcissism, right? Yeah, it's that entitlement mindset, right? Uh-huh. Where they think they deserve everything. Uh-huh. They think that, well, they have that mentality. What theirs is theirs and what yours is theirs. That's narcissism in action. So, exactly. And so we're like, okay then, 
So if all of this is in the spiritual, we're battling against that spiritual wickedness in high places. We're not wrestling against the human. Okay, then that means that's when God revealed that, well, because narcissism is a spiritual disorder because the human host that are demonically possessed, the narcissist, right? Yeah. They don't even know. Now, mind you, there are some who do know that they are and they like it. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the many crept and unaware that God talks about in Jude 1 4. So we come to realize more and more that narcissism is a spiritual thing. Has to be. Because if it wasn't, we would not be in a spiritual battle for the mind. Because it's all about mind control for the enemy, right? We are coming up on a short break. I am Michelle Dickey, your host for Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. Stay tuned to learn more about how narcissism is a spiritual disorder when we come back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Hello, everyone. I am Michelle Dickey, your host for Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we are discussing, you know, narcissistic abuse, trauma recovery, and things. But more specifically, in this episode, we are discussing how it was revealed that narcissism is a spiritual disorder and not a worldview label. Okay. Because those worldview labels, you all, are designed to help keep the enemy hidden in plain sight. You see, that's what that's all about. Because remember, just like the narcissist, the enemy is afraid of exposure. Well, <laughs> that's too bad. Because I'm not the only one out here doing what we're doing. I do it differently, sure. But because we all should. We do things how God put it in us to do it. And how we deliver the messages is going to resonate with those who are, yes, joining us in our growing community of spiritual warriors for Christ at Consulting for Heightened Awareness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, with open arms. And so you all know that when we do go live, especially with the Live Just Chat show, that live chat is open for you all. Absolutely. You have a voice at Consulting for Heightened Awareness. Oh, yeah. Yes, you do. You have a voice. 
all right? Because for far too long, God chosen one, that's right. We are now the head and not the tail. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Oh, but the first will try to hang on to any illusion of power and control they thought they had over us. Okay, just know that. And we come to learn that later on <laughs> as well. Okay, and so now we start searching for God's spiritual truth, right? And I share with you Romans chapter 1, those, those verses that describe what we're dealing with quite well. But that's not the only place, right? That's not the only place that God reveals it. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> um, 2 Timothy 3. Mm-hmm. 2 Timothy 3 is, oh gosh, the other place, right? Real quick, right? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And I mean, basically re reiterate Romans chapter one right there. And so we're like, wow, just wow. Because that's exactly what the narcissists are. They are very ungrateful. After all, they've got the demon of complaining, right? They go around and they complain, 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 complain. That tells us right there that they are not grateful. They are unthankful. There's your red flag. There's a difference between pointing out, yeah, something, okay, hold up a second, like if something needs fixing, right? Chosen ones are problem solvers. We don't complain about it. We, we notice it. We're like, Okay, hold up a second. How come that's not, you know, something like that. That's not complaining. Or for whatever reason, you know, the uh, device is acting funky after we did an iOS update, for example. Just know that, y'all, the apps are going to be a little funny for a couple of days when that happens. Okay, that's normal. That's not, that's not a spiritual attack. Don't let the enemy trick you. Okay. So we start searching for God's spiritual truths, right? And we find them in there. And we're like, okay, narcissism is a spiritual disorder. And so that was the season for me where, that's right, I got to work. I was like, man, I got to get this out there. And now we're in 2021. And so I published my first book where I talk more about it's one rose tinted and one clear lens. How Narcissism is the Work of the Devil. Now, before I got this published, this is the Amazon copy, but you can get your PDF copy on the website as well. CDHRWDRMD.org. Easy peasy PDF download. And you'll also find an audiobook copy for both books. Okay? For both of them on the website only. For those who like audiobooks. And I have to tell you that, man, just making those connections to scripture and then learning how the enemy uses the Bible as a movie script on the world stage. Well, okay. This is where we got to have that discernment. Another reason why God takes us through these seasons the way he does to reveal, okay, how narcissism is a spiritual disorder. Because once we see that and understand that, we're like, okay, because they are on the dark side, right? Like God tells us in Romans 1 as well, is that their foolish heart are darkened. Okay? So they are going to always be trying to steal, kill, and destroy. They're on assignment from the devil. They don't even know that they've been turned into a narcissist. They don't even know. 
they don't know. We're talking about the craft and unawares. They don't know they are demonically possessed. And especially the Jezebel. They are 100% clueless that they're a Jezebel. They have no idea. They have no idea that they their mind has been hijacked by subliminal messaging over the years. Negative stuff. They don't even know that. That's why when God awakens his chosen one at his appointed time, mm-hmm, he awakened our subconscious. We ain't going back to sleep. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it did not matter what the enemy tries to do. One chosen one are awake, or subconscious is awake. You're not going back to sleep. Once you understand, yeah, this is the world stage. People are going to believe what they're going to believe. But we stop ignoring the red flag. And we start learning that, okay, you know what? Because this is a spiritual disorder that they've got. Meaning, they're on the dark side. And they're spiritually dead. They don't have... A righteous spirit at all. And watch out for this. I say this a lot. I got to bring it here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Watch out for anyone or anything that tries to tug at your heartstring. That's what they want. With the Godhead on the inside, he knows your heart. He's watching that heart. Remember, the heart and soul reside in the subconscious. Yes. God's watching that. Yep. They are spiritually dead. Okay, They're like zombies out there. So all of those TV shows, you know, like The Walking Dead, anything that uh, references zombies. Yeah, I just give y'all a, a really bad depiction of what the zombies really look like. So the narcissist out here on the world stage, that's what they look like. All marching to the same beat. From the same drum. Puppets on a string. So. Then. We start to see just how childish. Narcissism is. Think about it. Just how childish. Narcissism truly is. Because. You have grown adults. Out here. Behaving like toddlers. We've seen them in the grocery store and elsewhere. Uh-huh. I will share with y'all. I've shared it in YouTube. I'm going to bring it here because it's a great example of what I'm talking about. Yes, this was not a <laughs> where I used to live. I was at the grocery store. And now that cashier that I was interacting with, I had talked to her before. She, yeah, she's a believer. She knows about this stuff too. All right. And so we had some pretty interesting combos, if you will. <laughs> All right. Well, we're exchanging pleasantries. You know, her and I are talking, you know, as we usually do. She's bringing up my grocery. And I only had maybe like a couple of items left for her to get to. And this woman had to be at least in her 60s or 70s. From what I could tell. Right? Apparently, with her panties in a wad, she comes up, tries to get in my space, and she just starts throwing her stuff on the conveyor belt. Literally, like, mm, mm, mm. and I'm sitting here going, okay. So the cashier and I, she looked at me like, and I went, because I knew. That toddler in, in an adult body, all they were doing was trying to get attention, right? They wanted us to say something because they wanted to argue. That's right. And so, I, like I told her, I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> don't say nothing. <laughs> and so she finished ringing up my groceries and I said, goodbye, see you next time. And just walked out the door, let it be. That's how we deal with narcissists that do that in public and elsewhere. All right? Ignore it. 
Don't acknowledge it. Don't say anything. Because they're going to make a scene. That's what they want to do. They want to make a scene because they want to try to embarrass us. Right? They want to try to humiliate us. That's how they'll do it. By making a scene in public. Because remember something. They are out to always make other people look like the bad guy. So they got to pull stunts like that. Because before we knew, that's right, the old version of us would have said, excuse me. And then boom, you know what I'm (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) We don't do that anymore. All right. And so we, because that's childish behavior from a grown adult, not normal. And we are coming up on a short break. Stay tuned for the wrap up about how narcissism is a spiritual disorder when we come back. Author, radio show host, and coach. John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation hello everyone i am michelle dickey your host for drive by with michelle streaming on the bold brave tv network and let's go ahead and do a brief recap on the journey (laughs) to discovering that narcissism is a spiritual disorder and not what the world wants us to think it is, okay? So in the beginning, we realized it's a real spiritual battle, right, between good and evil, right? And then we get to that season where we're seeing it more, and then we're like, wait a minute, is everybody a narcissist? Hold up a second. (laughs) No, this can't be. And so we start to see it more, and we're like, all right, we need God's spiritual truth, right? We get to that season. We start seeking God's spiritual truth. And he, he got, yeah, he guides us. Romans 1, 2 Timothy 3, and, and elsewhere, right? Okay, we're like, okay, all right. Because the worldview labels stop resonating. And so now we understand, okay, because it's a spiritual battle for the mind. So we are battling against spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh, and remember, Jesus did what? Right, he cast out devils. Okay, there's an S on the end of that for a reason. So I'm thinking, ah, so that means demonic possession is real. Okay. And then we realized that, okay, they don't even know it. Their negative emotions, those are the demon spirits, by the way, the fallen angels. Those demon spirits control them. 
They don't even realize that, that their emotion control them. And then we finally make it into uh, the season where we go, okay, all of this is really childish. It is child's play. And then we see how, yes, the world is the devil's playground, a.k.a. the world stage, after all. And then we see how the narcissistic matrix keeps them dumbed down and stunted emotionally through all of that abuse on the societal level daily and then it gets passed down from generation to generation until God awakens his chosen one at his appointed time and we are generational curse breakers and that trauma bond is the generational curse and so now we enter a season of what? How are we going to deal with these things? <laughs> well, like I shared in the previous example, in public, how we deal with it. Now, that technique, tried and true, came about as I was figuring these things out myself. And God was showing me how we deal with these. Okay? And so, the course at CHA Academy, btbw.com, how to deal with toxic coworkers. Those tried and true steps can be applied to dealing with narcissists in any environment with a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking for your specific circumstance. And I can help you do that. The Godhead and I can help you do that. Absolutely. You just got to reach out. But that course, you will find a review. And maybe by the time you come across the replay, <laughs> a few more reviews, okay? And you will see that those steps are immediately applicable. Because we start to see the narcissist in the workplace. Then we see them in our families. Oh boy, how are we going to... It gets easier to deal with them. Individual level, in the workplace. Then in the family. Now, by now, we're like, oh boy, okay. Because we're breaking trauma bond along the way, pulling down stronghold, breaking the generational curse. And yes, you will find the information extremely useful for dealing with narcissists in any environment. Okay? So I highly encourage you all to check that out. And you have the option. When you pull up, click all courses, right? And they all come up. Then you'll see how to deal with toxic coworkers. You'll see how the trauma bond is formed. You'll see the five piece coaching course. I mean, you see what we got going on. But if you're interested in that one, well, all of them, that's great. How to deal with toxic coworkers. That's how to deal with narcissists in any environment and when you click on that arrow you have the option of a one-time payment or five monthly installments whatever works best for you all right there you go nobody would know that if i didn't tell you <laughs> okay and um that's gonna help you because that's where we get to is we got to figure out how to deal with them all right so i got that information for you all and that wraps up this episode I am Michelle Dickey, your host uh, for <laughs> Drive By with Michelle, streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. For more insight, additional information, and other good stuff, you can hop on over to our YouTube channel, Narcissism and Cognitive Dissonance, link below, and join us, yes, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday after this show. For our Bible study. Okay, you all, there you go, live. And then also on Sunday around 2 p.m. Eastern Time for the Let's Just Chat show. And then Tuesday around 2 30 p.m. Eastern Time on the YouTube channel, live, Truth Secret Podcast. All right, everybody, there you go. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching, listening, and for your support. 
Till next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been watching Drive By with Michelle. Tune in each week as Michelle will guide you through a weekly dose of healing spiritual growth so you can live your best life. Right here, Saturdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.